Over the last two nights, we've told you about allegations of physical abuse made by former high-ranking members of the Church of Scientology against the church's leader, David Miscavige. Now, the church not only denies all those allegations, but says they come from people who are working together to destroy the church. And the church says one of the people making allegations was demoted and then removed from his senior position precisely because he was violent. Well, tonight, how even the competing versions of what happened ultimately raised questions that the public's entitled to know. What was going on in the church and why were the police never called to investigate? In late 03, there was a beating every day. And if it wasn't him doing it, it was from him inciting others to do it to others. In front of other people. In front of other people. Since first coming forward last year in the St. Petersburg Times with allegations of abuse against church leader David Miscavige, Marty Rathbun and five other former high-ranking Scientologists have found themselves under vigorous attack by the church they once dedicated their lives to. The former Scientologists are accused of working together to destroy the church. Tommy Davis is the church spokesman. The church is going to defend itself. It's going to defend itself for its own sake, and it's going to defend itself for the sake of its parishioners. And the fact of the matter is, is these individuals are out there, and they're lying. Current and former senior Scientologists sent CNN dozens of declarations, emails, and affidavits defending the church and its leader and attacking the credibility of those who've spoken out. Thank you very much. The church says former construction manager Tom DeVock was violent and wasted millions of church dollars during his time in the Sea Organization, the church's religious order. They allege former spokesman Mike Rinder physically attacked his subordinates and said former marketing manager Jeff Hawkins has attended rallies with an anti-Scientology movement called Anonymous, which protests against the church. Most of the church's affidavits specifically named Marty Rathbun, whom they say assaulted members of the Sea Organization on numerous occasions. The affidavits are from people who, who said within the church who said that the beatings and the physical abuse was not perpetrated by David Miscavige, but was perpetrated by you. Right outright lies I did some and I didn't come in here ever telling you I was a little Lord Fauntleroy and never did anything wrong I'm no angel I'm gonna tell you I was involved in this but for God's sake to try to make it sound like I perpetuated the whole thing is just a complete and utter fa fabrication in sworn affidavits a number of church members make specific allegations against Marty Rathbun including more than a dozen instances of physical violence one person writes she witnessed Rathbun hitting a colleague, quote, about the head and in the face while yelling at him. Another writes Rathbun, quote, walked into the office and appeared upset with me, adding he suddenly punched me in the stomach. And his own ex-wife says Marty Rathbun lives for war. People, ma many of them who, who you know very well, they all say David Miscavige is kind. They say he's hardworking, that he's a passionate man who's done really nothing but good for the church. They will say anything they need to say, Anderson. Current senior members of the Sea Organization say that while their former colleague, Marty Rathbun, was repeatedly violent, for many years, none of them informed the church's leader, David Miscavige. That guy had the streak of violence. Four you know? occasions between 2000 and 2002 to you, Mr. Starkey, as well as at least five incidents in 2001. So that's nine incidents between 2000 and 2002. Yeah, the that's not the is Rathbun. Marty Rathbun is gone. When it was found out, he's out of the church. So no there one can answer no me why David Miscavige was not finish. informed for several I, years. I absolutely can answer finish. you. Mr. Miscavige was not there. He what was not there, but there are telephones, you have fax machines, you have emails. Yeah, well, why well when somebody informed? blows up like a Marty Rathbun or commits something, you don't immediately pick up the phone and call the leader of a World War religion. Well, you have four years to do it here. <laughs> so no one over the course of four years informed David Miscavige that there that a high okay, so like this. church. No, we have it. We people. plus you have. There's something you don't understand. You can Martin say yes Redburn, and no. no, no. I'm just Martin a Redburn was not in a top position when that happened at all. He was, and, and you know, we. Well, have, he was. He was in. He was a member of the C organization. He was important enough to have an office next to you. Right. Nobody informed David Miscavige mm -hmm. this was going on. That's Look, right. Here's the point: is yes, that when right. is that when the point is is that when Mr. Miscavige was informed, Marty was removed. That's what matters. There's no physical evidence proving the former Scientologist charges, just as the affidavits supporting Miscavige and attacking his critics also cannot be verified. But surprisingly, though they disagree on who was perpetrating it, both sides describe a work environment inside the church where punching, choking, and kicking as a means of discipline and intimidation occurred on numerous occasions. And no one ever filed criminal charges or even called the police.
Tommy Davis is the church spokesman, and Monique Yingling is an attorney for the church. How is it possible that a member of the church could assault about a dozen people and nobody come forward about it and nobody people file did. any charges? How come people. the church didn't file any charges if, in fact, Marty Rathbun was really beating people up? People did come forward about it, and there were reports written, as, uh, as Mr. Davis pointed out. And the reason that there were reports written was because it was very untoward. There may have been some people who decided they didn't want to report it, and they suffered it in silence. But there were indeed reports written. So why didn't the church then decide to proceed with charges? I mean, aggravated assault is, 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 a, is a felony. It's against he, the law. The church treated it as an internal matter, and he was disciplined internally. I understand. You, you said that, that Marty Rathbun beat people more than a dozen times or so. You said Mike Rinder has beat people, and that was known apparently at the time, at least some of it was known at the time, a and yet that seemed to be acceptable behavior in the church. I mean, that, they, that, that no charges were ever filed uh, against any of these people. Well, seems they were remarkable to me they, if, in fact, that is really the truth, uh, unless the opposite is true and their charges are true, and it was the head of the church who was doing these beatings, in which case it would make sense that no charge would be filed or no one would come forward. Well, they were removed. The point is, is that they were removed. The choice of the individuals who were attacked on to whether to file charges or not was completely their choice. But, but if they, this is they, so important to, to Scientology's beliefs, beatings, why then it doesn't seem that it was taken all that seriously. Oh, it absolutely was. Oh, I was. think I it just, was taken just, very, very seriously. I mean, I, I, if my boss is he beating, might, well, started me, to beat me up here and, and the head of Time Warner said, oh, well, you know, we're going to deal with it as an internal matter, I mean, I, I think that would be pretty shocking. Here's the thing. The point is, is, is that when it was discovered, he was disciplined and he was removed. Well, David Miscavige, the chairman of the board of Scientology, rarely meets the media. He's not done a news interview since 1998. We've offered many times for Mr. Miscavige to appear on 360 for the series, but his spokesman, Tommy Davis, has declined for Mr. Miscavige. Our invitation is still open. We'd love to have him on the program. Tomorrow night on 360, what happens to those who leave the church and speak out? You can go to ac360.com to watch parts one and two of our investigation. Again, our series continues tomorrow and Friday night.